Hi, kindergartners. Welcome back to our first station of 2021. We're in a new year now, aren't we? Well, boys and girls, we have a lot planned for the month of January in math. And we're going to be working on our numbers in the teens all the way up to 20. And we're also going to be working on shapes and getting a lot of practice with addition and subtraction. So we're going to revisit some of the old things we've been working on, but we're going to take them a little bit further. And of course, we're also going to work on some of the things that we've been doing all along, like our math words, like fewer, more, less, all that good stuff too. All right, well, today I thought we'd start our station by taking a look at this shape trip game that I have here. Can you see this shape trip game? All right, so you'll notice there's a lot of shapes just kind of put on top of here, aren't they? I'm going to put them over to the side for a minute so that you can take a look at this picture. And maybe as you look at the picture, you're starting to notice a lot of shapes already. Do you see some of them? What do you see, Martin? Yeah, you're right. There's triangles. Yeah. And uh, what was that, Nicholas? Yeah, I'm surprised you said square. I wondered if you would get tricked on that because I thought somebody would say, oh, look, they just noticed the big shape along the outside. Let me talk about that a little bit. Yeah, but this one's a square and that one's a square. That's right, Nicholas. All right, well, what we're supposed to do on this game is we're supposed to match these shapes that are here to the shapes in the picture. They call it shape trip. It looks like it's a camping trip or something like that by the lake. Don't you wish we were doing that right now? Oh boy, do I ever. That would be a different season though, wouldn't it? Some of you might like winter camping though. Some of you might be really uh, outgoing and adventurous. All right, well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to take a shape and I'm just going to start moving it around and we'll kind of decide where it should go. Now, I know this has four sides, so I can't put that by a triangle. That would not work. But, oh, look at it. Looks like we may have found a match, doesn't it? What's that one called? That one's called a square. It slid right off, didn't it? No matter which way I turn it, though, it's still a square. If you move it this way. Right now, I've got another one. Huh, I thought that had three sides so I could put it there, but it doesn't work there. Oh, yeah. It goes right over here on the tree. I think that's what Martin had told us about the triangle, right? But look at our square keeps popping off. All right, now we've got another one. What do you say about this, Aubrielle? Yes, ma'am, you're right. That's a circle. Let's try to match that up. Oh, look, it does fit right on top of the sun up here. Yeah, you're right. The sun in the sky, when it's not flat, right, in the picture, is actually a sphere. That's a 3D shape. Okay. Oh, look. This one matches this other one. So if this one's a square, this one has to be a square, too. Oh, this is what Nick was telling us about. Look at a square here and a square here. Mm -hmm. But look what happens when we push those together. Two squares together make a rectangle that's right because we no longer have four equal sides like on a square then two are longer than the other two we're going to be working with putting together shapes and taking them apart and seeing what we get throughout this month oh look at hang on this is interesting here what do you think about this let me try this one here if it does anything differently for us so this one has three sides, it has three corners, mm -hmm. but it is not exactly the same as this triangle. Oh, this is an equal lateral triangle. Yep, all those sides are equal or the same. But when I look at this one, look, I'm gonna have to flip it over to make it fit. Mm -hmm. Look at that. It has different lengths, yep. That's, uh, yeah, that's a scalene triangle. You don't have to remember that fancy word quite yet, but it is good for you to know that's still a triangle because it still has three sides, yep, these three corners here. Okay, good. That's true. This one, yeah, that's another kind of triangle. That one's called a right triangle because mm -hmm, the way that these two lines come together, it makes something they call a right angle. 
but there's still triangles and that's all we really need to know right now. But it is fun to know that there's more we can learn about shapes. Oh, look at this one is still a triangle. Yep, it's just facing the other way. Look at it, I can line it up right on top of there, can I? Yep, they're the same size. They're just turned different ways and we can do that with shapes also. Interesting. Boy, Mrs. Finkel needed to put something on these so they wouldn't go. Look at it, it's almost like a static electricity or something. They're moving all around on us. Okay, so we've got this one here. Oh, yep. This one, yeah, I agree. It looks like this one over here, but this time we're going to line it up with this one. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one, huh. Abriel showed us this circle, and here's another circle, but it's a little bit larger. So they can come in different sizes. That's right. Let's try this one over here. More circles. We're doing quite well with this, aren't we? Oh, yeah, that seemed hidden to me. I didn't see it until I moved my hand, but look, if I flip this one over, it'll fit nicely in there. Another one of those fancy triangles. All right, oh yeah, we could turn this. Let's see what we get when we turn the shape. Oh, that's not gonna fit. I'm gonna have to flip it over in order for it to fit on there. Interesting. Well, you can slide shapes, yeah? You can turn them. Mm -hmm. and you can do different things with them. Look at, let's flip this one. And if I flip it, it's gonna fit right on there. Mm -hmm. I just gotta turn it another way. If I want to check to see if I got this correct by matching the colors, watch. When I flip this one, it doesn't fit on that side anymore because of the type of triangle that is. So I have to then do a switcheroo. See how those don't fit on there the same anymore? But if I turn these around, mm -hmm, so now they're facing the opposite direction, they'll work on there. See how those lined right up? They sure do. Now, it's a little different with these blue ones. You see, no matter how I turn this triangle, yeah, I can still make it fit because all of the sides on this triangle, yep, they're all the same length, so it doesn't matter which way I turn it. Let's see if I can flip it over and just check the color there now. Yep, there it goes. It fits right on there like that. Did you want to check our squares? One square, two squares. If we think of them together, they'll make a rectangle. Look at the triangle on the side of this one to make the side of the tent. Mm -hmm. Then we had different, oh, look at another circle. The same shape, but a different size. We're noticing all kinds of things about these shapes, aren't we? All right, well, boys and girls, we'll keep talking about shapes, and it'll be even more fun when we get to play with shapes a little bit later on. But you know what else we need to talk about today? We need to talk about our number of the week, number 13. Remember these papers? Mm -hmm. When we did these before, you knew that we would cut all the way down the side. Then we'd go around the outside, get rid of our scrap so our work area doesn't get messy. And then the ones that match, the 13s, get glued right on here. And then you can practice tracing a 1 and a 3, a 1 and a 3, a 1 and a 3. Hey, let's spend a minute talking about that, what this means. Did you know that this one means there's one group of 10 and then three more? You want to see what that means? Look, I've got some little snowflakes inside of here. They're kind of fun. I didn't count them out yet, but I do know there's more than 13. But you know what I want to do? I want to get 13 snowflakes together, but I don't want to have to just count them by ones every time. So I want to make a group of 10. Because see that number one right there? That means one group of 10. So let's make a group of 10. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
there's my 10 group right there. Remember we used the 10 spring for that quite often, didn't we? And we said, if we have a filled up 10 spring, the value of that is 10. But I want to build 13, so I've got one group of 10, and then I'm going to count out three more. One, two, three. I'm going to get these out of the way because if I use these snowflakes here, I would have a number greater than 13, wouldn't I? And I don't want a number greater than 13. Right now, I want a number that's equal to 13. So I'm going to have my tens group and my three ones. Now let's count those together. Everyone say 10, 11, 12, 13. Very good. Now boys and girls, as the week goes on, we'll make 13 in different ways. But right now I just want you to imagine it with these snowflakes. 10, 11, 12, 13. Yep. Then you can do this paper. All right, let's look at a little bit more practice with the number 13. You're going to practice writing the number, and here's what I want you to remember about writing it. Now, when we're doing these double-digit numbers, you have to get the spaghetti and meatball spaces just right. And you remember what I mean about those, right? Yeah, the spaghetti spaces were the little skinny spaces. Oh, you want to see some spaghetti? I think I see some in the cupboard. Let me check. Who knows what happens when I open the cupboard, though? All right, this is we need the right kind of spaghetti. Oh, yep. Yeah. That one's just a short box of spaghetti. We'll get these. Yeah. Do you see how thin that spaghetti is? I think there's meatballs in the freezer too, but I'm afraid to open up the freezer right now. Let's get one of these thin spaghetti noodles. Now, if I'm rating the number 13, I just want a thin little space between the one and the three. If I had a big meatball space like this space right here, people will think it's part of a new number. They'll think it's one and three, not 13. All right, so you'd make the one, straight line one, lots of fun. And then you number three, around the tree, around the tree. That's the way to make a three. And then you can leave a big space before writing your next number 13. All right, remember to get those spaces, the correct size there. I don't know about you, but I know it's been a little bit of time since I've been doing things like writing my name and filling out paperwork. So it would be a great idea to practice writing your name on top. Oh, you did it this morning for some of your morning work? Excellent. I'm glad you're still doing those papers. Very good. All right, boys and girls, you uh, do your best on your number 13s. And I'll be excited to see how those turn out.